Okay, good afternoon. I am starting my day at about 3.16. <laughs> so I actually bought this yesterday. It's from Jollibee. It is their double um, patty uh, beef burger. I have fries. Um, I just put it in the... I, I came back quite late, so I put it in the fridge. I think it should be fine. I hope it's fine. <laughs> um, I bought a huge... Um, it's from... Let's see. It's from Copian Tots. It is coffee. Again, this is yesterday's. So I'm just like drinking it and I thought I would go through with you some of the work I've been doing over the past couple of days. I have not been feeling very well. I have the... So anyway, <laughs> I've not been filming. So yeah, let me just run you through a few pages. Okay, so welcome to Behind the Scenes. This is Inside My Tapastic Account. So, um, yeah, I'm showing you this because I'm not sure whether you can see live, but I am currently working on three books. Book one, which is Tales of the Fae, uh, Tegan Meth. Book two, Tales of the Fae, Southbridge. And book three, Tales of the Fae, Thistle and Blue. So, right now, I actually, while I was thinking very hard about it, I was thinking of changing the name from this to Blaze, Thistle and Blaze, and the mysterious case of the stolen musician, which I feel would be much more interesting because it actually talks about what is going on in the story rather than just uh Tekin uh this one blue this one blue was a painting i did so initially it makes sense in my mind <laughs> to just say um this one blue but over time and as i developed the story i never really updated it so now, yes, I have now officially updated it. And there's so many other things I have not updated. Um, title. This and Blaze. Subtitle. Is it a subtitle? Can I say that this is a sub- No, I think- I guess it's not a subtitle. This little blaze and the mysterious case of the stolen musician. It's just like that. And then series. The tale of the day. <laughs> Book three. Yeah. I think that looks a lot neater. Yeah, this title, Thistle and Blaze and the Mysterious Case of the Stolen Musician. It's gonna be like the longest title, isn't it? Thistle and Blaze and the Mysterious Case of the Stolen Musician because of the Fae Book 3. But I mean, it gives you all of the information you need about the story <laughs> at, at this point okay i also have recently created um these so yeah um yeah i was checking out the timing um If you guys have a hard time writing my name, I also have a hard time writing my name. So yeah, if you guys like my work and you would like to support me, I have the tipping option on Ko-fi. So you can um, give me a little tip to support my art practice. Only if you have the means. Only if you have the means. Okay, only if you have the means. Please do not try to tip if you have no money. I really 
understand how it feels to have no money but still want to support so if you want to support please subscribe to this youtube channel please subscribe to my comics it doesn't cost you anything um and just read my stuff and enjoy my music that i have on spotify youtube and several other places you don't have to part with money to support me if you don't have money only if you have the money and you can then you can okay all right <laughs> that would help a lot how help me to be able to buy more cups of coffee so that i can have a cup of coffee every day instead of like buying one and cherishing it for a couple of days <sighs> thank you so yeah this story is a gl the other two are actually bg stories boy girl stories where the there are different sexes involved Ooh, so spicy but this is my, my normal stuff my gl <laughs> not being too experimental here back to my lgbtqia shit <laughs> no but seriously like um I, I don't know like when i write because i don't have any experience dating a guy um even if myself am non-binary i i struggle with like it's different when I, I do B, BL because for boy love fantasy it's entirely just what my impression of two guys is you know it is like ooh this is sexy <laughs> so it's a lot easier for me to make up fan fiction about guys I feel like I write on the same level as like a Tumblr fangirl writing about like smexy supernatural fan fiction you know what I mean <laughs> Um, and then of course girl, uh, GL girl love is more of my forte because I'm in a cute little um, lesbian relationship so it's you know <laughs> I'm very familiar with the territory so yeah this I feel is my strong suit and I feel like it's a lot more how do I say realistic <laughs> a lot more down to earth when I write about two girls in love because yeah it's something I'm familiar with so that's why I'm like, ooh, familiar <laughs> Uh Yeah. But the other ones, I would say, um, in, ironically, I kind of think um, I based a lot of my impression of like, like Teak and Meth, boy love, boy girl love on my parents. Like, don't tell my parents, but I kind of feel like I idealize their relationship. And so, Teak and Meth, and basically any relationship between a guy and a girl, it is like the idealized version of what I perceived my parents' relationship to be. Like, my parents' relation, my parents have had ups and downs, but to be honest, they've been like, oh my god, the most sickeningly sweet cutiest cutiest cutest of all <laughs> boy girl relationships i have ever seen in my life <laughs> like the way my dad is in love with my mom and the way my mom is kind of into my dad it's just like uh... <laughs> so like yeah i would say um i'm writing fan fiction about my parents once again don't tell them <laughs> that's embarrassing um but yeah, so that's why if you notice a lot of the guys will behave in a certain way and a lot of the girls will behave in a certain way because like I imagine like if my parents were younger, how would they behave based on what I observed when I was growing up? <laughs> uh, yeah. So <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you want to watch some fan fiction about someone's parents, <laughs> enjoy. Now, um, yeah, so I, I did this video because I wanted to take you and show you how much I've worked on. So, oh my god, are you actually going to show us a free example? <laughs> so, yes, I'm actually going to show you some sneak peeks into my comic. So this comic is going to be released on the 25th of July. It is now the 20th. 22nd so yeah you can see the first episode is dropping on 25th so if you are watching this in august it's definitely already available 
you just go click all the links and go and subscribe and go and enjoy it and so yeah so far i have actually drawn about 16 pages but some of the pages i have actually put together like um page one uh, is page one and page two so i put those two together and actually the ad the little ad that you see here is from uh i think Panel number 13. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> this is the actual. Yes. So, so this, oh yeah. So this page that you see here is actually um, a page that I drew in 2024. It is one of the pages. And, and the reason why it's this style is because I'm trying to match it as closely as possible to the current style in the comic. I wouldn't say like this is my current style altogether. I'm still trying to work on it. I'm still trying to interpret like what my style of comics is. I'm not quite happy with this style. So my future comics like for Tiki and Meth, because that story is much, much, much longer. I do think that I'm actually going to start using my new style in the uh, later pages um and also the glitch comic that i'm going to be working on that one i'm definitely going to be using my new style <laughs> so there's all that here's an example of an older page that i've worked on um this one uh the original page actually looks very similar to this but i just traced over and cleaned up the lines so this is what I was using as a reference to the page 13 that I worked on over here. Yeah, so you can see like it's a bit similar but not. Because like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like trying to work with my 26, 27 year old self, you know, who was trying to work with her 16 year old self so it's it's a lot it's a lot yeah i think so far my favorite page is this one um i i felt like the the little bubbles and the, the depictions of like focusing on different people in the crowd was very nice followed up by this one where you can see um her just absorbing the experience of being in the rain and having that moment and then this page where I focus in on her. But as you can see, the style keeps changing between pages. And that's because like when I was first starting working on comics, I used a lot of references and I really struggled to depict my own style because I was really good at like copying like the references. Um, and I used a mixture of like uh, human references anyway i think i talked about this already early in the video so yeah this uh, you can see how the faces keep changing so i really need to work on that which i will which i will so yeah there you go um things that i have cleaned up is the borders i cleaned up the lines so that i can upload it to, pa to plastic and it's cleaner yeah now we have some harsh lines and i also moved the squares a little bit because the original let me see if i can bring up the original um, so that's what the original 2016 page looks like and the reason why i keep referencing 2016 is because the first time i published this was in 2016 and i was um 26 years old so you can see how different it is this the black and white page is what I updated. So if you look at it, um, I kind of worked on the face. Try to make her more similar to the, the running face. Give her a bit more facial fats in the corner and her little cheek. And um, I didn't edit much with the shoulders um, on the, the midsection panel. But you can kind of see that the last panel uh is a lot bigger than this panel uh this it, i i expanded that and um i also created white lines around the figures to make them pop out and stand out from the page this is something i noticed that a few mangakas do and i actually was reading 
uh, toilet bound Hanako and I noticed that when I was reading the comic pages I could see that they kind of like make the characters stand out pop out so I wanted to integrate those techniques to kind of give my page a lot more stronger presence so yeah that's what I did to sort of clean up the overall look and feel of the page and I did this treatment to quite a few of the pages so unfortunately I don't think you'll be able to buy the original issue by the time this video goes out because I really intend by the end of this month to clean up and to republish this book um, as, uh, as a single as a single edition so Southbridge will be its own standalone and it will be black and white and then all of the other pages which I'm working on I'm going to compile and do like an anthology which will be a colored version which will be released after I have finally released and completed Tekken, uh, sorry, Thistle and Blaze and the Mysterious Case of the Missing Musician that will be in the future <laughs> so yeah um i think it's i don't know you let me know in the comment section below which one do you think is better i personally think the one that i've done now is better no shade to my 26 year old self i feel that she created the foundations of what i am working on so i'm very grateful to her and i want to honor her by still trying my best to actually finish the entire series and publish it the way she wanted it to be because obviously she's honoring my 16 year old self who's honoring my six year old self because i started all of these fantasies and fairy tales when i was like a baby <laughs> i was like six years old like i want to be a writer i want to be an artist i want to make lots and lots of stories and i want to entertain kids all over the world <laughs> And I'm still running after that dream and trying to like convince myself, hey, this is hard. And I'm still here in the back of my mind like, you can do it. You can get through all the problems if you just believe. And I'm just like, ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I can't let myself down. So yeah, here we are. <laughs> okay, I am back. So I was actually looking around trying to find um, illustrations to depict the thistle and blue painting I did in the past. And I just wanted to share with you my old art. Oh my goodness. So this is Tumblr, January the 2015. And as I was scrolling, I think it's somewhere down here. Yes? No? Yes? No? Um, where is it? Or was it 2014? Uh, let me check 2014. 2014. Start of January. I saw um, pages of Southbridge. That's what I'm looking for. I was like, wow. It's been so long. Also like, oh my gosh. Look at that. There was a time when I used to go out and draw, can you imagine? I used to go to cafes and I used to draw and stuff. This was the finished piece, I think. Well, yeah, there we go. That's the finished piece. It's quite big. It's like uh, about A2 size. It was quite huge. I still have it, but I put it in storage. Um, I like it. Yeah. I don't know why, but like when I do digital art, I really feel like it doesn't really give me the same level of control or like interpretation as I feel my uh, traditional art is. Sorry, when I do digital art. I'm not as strong. And I feel like it's taken me years to get to this place where I'm starting to feel actually comfortable working digitally, but I still up until today prefer traditional art. Look at this weird ass table that I made. Um, this is why I'm, I tell you guys, I cannot sculpt to save my life. Like, what is this? This is actually called the cacti table, but clearly it looks like tentacles. Like in hindsight, I should have just said it was the octopus table. Um, I was taking a furniture design class. I like these though. I still like these. 
furniture model 2013 yeah i think these are cute i would actually buy chairs like this if they existed i think this is my favorite one yeah isn't that so cool i sculpted this and painted it out of um i think clay there was some more sets on the side i think i was trying to make like a like a furniture and then this is like yeah i even sold the pillows can you imagine i sold the pillows how adorable is that yeah moroccan garden seats and mosaic patterns look at me misspelling things once again i'm so sorry <laughs> i cannot spell to save my life oh my gosh okay but anyway that's not the main thing oh look at this my interpretation of ariel 2012 before the movie came out <laughs> no but seriously like i imagine like this would be ariel's sister that's why i just call her mermaid and clearly her fins are just on her feet i'm not quite sure why she has stitches oh maybe i was trying to interpret a physical transformation of fins to feet where she got cut up Ooh. Yeah, my art was always a little bit morbid, a little bit more interpretation. <laughs> um, I personally feel like when I look at this piece, I feel that I could probably make it better. Like I feel like I could make it better. This is supposed to be Beauty from Beauty and the Beast. But uh, I keep thinking that way about everything. <laughs> Which is why I'm redoing my comic. Okay, Ooh, would you like to see my very first doll? This is Lulu. This is my possessed doll. She became possessed and I had to donate her. Um, I gave her away to a children's home. I felt like maybe the innocence might cure her. Um, I was living in a place where there was a lot of, let's just say, spirits around. And honestly, it wasn't surprising that she got possessed. I, I do miss her. She was beautiful. She cost me like 300 plus do dollars to buy her. She was like a proper ball joint doll. Um, now I know better. Now I know how to make sure that um, I take proper care of my dolls. And I'm probably going to start collecting dolls again. Definitely don't live in a place where there's a lot of like spiritual activity and people actively trying to possess themselves and then they don't properly deal with the magic and then your doll becomes a vessel probably don't live in a place like that <laughs> my poor poor doll anyway i actually wanted to give her to my best friend but i actually care about my best friend so i didn't oh, i miss her i really hope that doll is in a good place i hope that doll is safe wherever she is I hope she got cured. <laughs> um, by the way, my current doll and my possessed doll share the same name. Um, just in case you're wondering. Seriously, where is it? I was literally just going through the pages. Okay, maybe it's 2016. Maybe it's 2016. Let me just check 2016. The, the year when I published the book. Aha, mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, we go. Yeah, so here is the title page. Yeah, there we go. So this is the. Here are some previous illustrations. Um, maybe. Oh, I think somewhere I posted the pages individually. Haha, there we go. Yes, yeah, 2000, January. Oh, it is 2015. So January 2015. I don't know why it didn't show up earlier. But January 2015. Here we go. Yeah, so this is the very, very first page first illustration first version of this page let me get the side it's 
do a side by side yeah so whoa why is it so huge oh my god it's so huge hold on hold on, hold on. so sorry Two thousand fifteen versus now. So this is why I say I've been working on this for a very long time. Um, so clearly, as you can see, this page was not made in two thousand sixteen. It was, I think, made maybe two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen, something like that. And if you if you notice, the middle, the central image, the central image is different. So. In the center, oh, in the center, I tried to retouch it up. It was my first attempt at learning digital art, um, and I clearly wasn't good at it. I wasn't good at perspective. I'm still working on my perspective and anatomy. Um, I don't know if I have any copies of the initial initial one before I tried to do digital art. Um, I actually kept the pieces of paper, but I had to move at some point, and I think I've completely lost all the the original paintings that I did. But yeah, I still up until now love the background. I still love this watercolor effect that I created. I still think it's so pretty, and I that's why I really want to even now do like a comic book where I have the time. Like, I'm, I'm earning enough money that I can literally take time off social media and life and still be able to feed myself. And that's what it would take to sit down and make an entirely watercolor or acrylic painted comic book. Because I really feel like that would be beautiful and I feel like that would be like the height of my ability as an artist. But ain't nobody got time for that so that's why i'm still trying to struggle to do digital art and anyway you can now compare the two pages whoops so this is my current skill set see <laughs> i think i've done pretty good for myself i think despite the fact that it doesn't have the same soft watercolor effect the character is a lot more clearer you can kind of see her features now obviously i still feel like i have much to improve on and as i keep mentioning the styles keep changing so when i look at this character i'm like she still doesn't look like my character she still doesn't look like a character that i would say is my style um i think a style that is very distinct and that is very um personable is the current fad or i don't know <laughs> I I feel a little bit like Mew Mew about this because the thing is I love this comic. Um I don't know if you've seen the guy she was interested in wasn't a guy at all. It has become extremely popular. I mean at least like if you read Yuri manga <laughs> it is so popular right now which is amazing you cannot you cannot say that this is not awesome this is amazing this style is so amazing and the character is so distinct like this is so distinct like you know this is the artist you know what i mean so yeah i want to have an art style where the minute that you see my art style you're like oh my god that is i night so that's why i'm still working on and trying to interpret like what exactly is my style what exactly is my style because i've been reading her work and i've been so impressed by the consistency of the character design and the paneling and i feel like her expressions are really really awesome so yeah and then of course the story is like wow it's so fun it's about music it's about if you guys haven't seen it yet please go check it out it's really awesome it's a very very awesome um manga beautiful rich colors and i think what's the most striking part is the green the green is an amazing contrast to the black and white 
and it's featured in many many of the panels many of the colors i imagine i don't know how they print this though i really want to get my hands on a copy obviously i'm too poor at the moment the price is like 20 dollars, but i am saving up don't worry i am gonna save up i am i don't care i love this book so i'm gonna get my hands on a copy and yeah i've always been thinking like when i post my stuff on amazon right um you can either do black and white and you can do color and i imagine color is much more expensive to to produce which is why i also feel like it would be so worth it to own a copy of this because it's black and white with green and i'm like that is this is the first time i've ever heard of it this isn't heard of so i'm like i think it's worth it a hundred percent to invest in buying a copy of this book and any other copy so i think yen press is rolling out an english version so i'm gonna work but wait until the english version rolls out and then i'm going to put my little monies that i've been saving up and i'm gonna go and buy myself a copy <laughs> hi did you do all this just to gush about this yes yes i did <laughs> no 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 i'm joking i'm joking actually no i did all this so that i can share with you my art so yeah um here's a few other pages this is actually i haven't changed the cover at all the cover is still the original cover the only thing i've done with the cover is i've made it black and white so let me the color cover is the same Let's see black and white. yeah so this is the and yeah black and white copy which is basically the same except i've added um tales of the fae book two because when i first started working on all of this stuff the south bridge and teak and meth in my head were together and then the book two was supposed to be uh thistle and blue or thistle and blaze in the mysterious case of the stolen musician so now i feel that because i was thinking of it in volumes or arcs it made sense but now that i'm putting it in stages and books it doesn't make sense so i felt like i had to add this just to give context of like where you are in the story i hope that makes sense <laughs> okay so that's the only change for this one oh, it's so cool going being able to go back and and see what things used to be yeah so here uh yeah here is some like i think i was using these as thumbnails for the different um pages did i post this anywhere south bridge is one of my very first comics it's a story about two star-crossed lovers who find each other on the south bridge it's a brief read and it is meant to be felt more than told to you so i hope you enjoy the visual experience of my art yeah so yeah i put it on domestic there used to be a domestic.com slash series slash south bridge let me click it can you still go to it does it still exist no it doesn't exist that's why i'm redoing the whole entire thing what's this patreon oh la, 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 la. i mean yeah i have my sticker club i forgot that i've had it for that long <laughs> oh my gosh i'm so old <laughs> so yeah that these are some close-ups of the shots Ooh, this one i wonder if i yeah let me let me pull up the page that this one is the same or similar as mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cut pages yeah so yeah so the <laughs> the difference is insane the difference is insane so this uh the page that you're seeing here this is um ah uh, this is my 2016 edit this is my early edit first time creating everything this one and then 2016 i was like no i'm gonna go hard i'm gonna do sharp jaws and everything <laughs> i 
still don't really know which one I prefer but like yeah I thought I'd go through it so yeah if you guys are interested in checking out some of my old stuff this is my blog um, I have this tab called my favorite things and in this tab you can actually see a bunch of stuff here which is my favorite stuff below this tab is my art so I'm trying to organize stuff to be able to sort of go back and see all the stuff that I've done in the past so I have this tab called my art where you can kind of see specifically all the stuff that I've done um, but I think you still might have to scroll quite a bit so best is you go archive which is right at the bottom and you can go to the month and we all the way <laughs> to 2015 and then you can pretty much see all the stuff that the oh here we go yeah this is this is another nice distinct page that I wanted to do uh, compare and contrast with so let's go back here Okay, so yeah, you can see panel by panel and you can see how different it is now. I really tried my best to um, make her stand out more. However, something I like more about the original page is I made everything else monotone and I made everything else faded. So the main character actually stood out more. But in the new page, you can see that I wanted to actually talk about like humanity, you know, like how she feels like she's part of this mess. And so I did want the people to stand out a little bit more and I wanted the people to look a lot more uh, human like and I wanted to depict their facial expressions sort of as if we're all part of this together but also not really you know i also wanted to emphasize that everyone else is getting wet but her so you can kind of see distinctly that they're getting wet but i think even in the previous one i did manage to interpret that I'm not quite sure <laughs> also the previous one is just the, the rain falls whereas this one has all this dialogue <laughs> I guess as I got older, I felt like I had more to say. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. So, yeah. Yay. I'm so glad I got to share this with you. I'm so glad I came across this. Okay, back to the rest of Okay, so do I have anything else to share with you? No, I think I'm just going to end this here. That's all. Thank you so much for popping in. And I'm going to go and eat my lunch now. I hope you're having a lovely day. See you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>